We're down to the last two poets for the evening. Next poet up is the mic. Uh, I heard her once at the uh, Bayou, what was the thing called, Stephen? What did we do? With the guys from Louisiana? Interstate Poetry Show. Interstate Poetry Show. And uh, I was not expecting to see her read, but it was amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Miss Tracy Lyle. There she is. Give it up. Guys, go rock. 
How about a, how, I have a nice quiet piece for you. <laughs> She has a dead fetus in her purse. Third one this year, dropped from a bloody stream. Thighs. She felt the steaming cramped and rushed to the bathroom where blob hit the edge of the toilet seat and fell to the floor. It was wrapped in toilet paper. Green sweaters, the man silhouette, Nana's Christmas, and smelly candles, starlight men's from motels, secrets and locked trunks, the cedar of memories. This time, Johnny never came back. Yet she waits by the wall from whose long spiraling cord hangs like vortex, like time bombs, like migrating insects found dead at the bottom of the closet next to his dusty boots. Boots of a man always bleeding. She taps her fingers on the table, heart dropping like a favorite coffee mug on tile, you know, the one from San Francisco, the last American vacation of gas tanks, two-door Monte Carlos, and stamps night luggage. Back when high school romance meant proms and teddy bears and underground music and dreams of foreign lands like pinballs in India, Czechoslovakia, or whatever, she wipes the tablecloth in her fist. When she realized he never came back to try again, she climbed the fire escape, planned and denied suicide, and decided on shopping instead. Those lace-up boots for long treks on bustly rainy streets. Postcards of backwood roads and farms Picturescapes of a naturist dream, tree houses, backyard wells, small town bazaars, and babies. Those elder lady bazaars of felt ornaments, knit socks, blankets, and mirrored knickknacks. Those small towns of elder ladies, 50 years of marriage, lipstick gunking in the cracks of their lips, grandchildren, great grandchildren, Bible societal lives. She burns those postcards in back alleys, lighters, and sketches of phantasmagorical horror sold at art festivals and flimsy makeshift booths of steel pipes and plastic clips. Beneath the tarps, the tall pines tucked within the last botanical area, within thousands of miles of city sprawl. Concrete, plaster, condos, blocking views, rush hour traffic where millions gather. And on her way to work, she waves as they drop their children off at school. Elementary smiles and chubby cheeks. They protect their babies from this Predator. City streets, dawn of the dead, clock in, clock out, rush home, computer strain, fluorescent lamp, tan, elevators and parking garages, fire escapes and fire escapes in the fire that burns inside of her when all the babies die. But she never knows what to do with their bodies. She would buy a wig, a wardrobe, tell her friends to call her Jackie, sign up for screen printing classes. Yeah, she made t-shirts of all the places she wished she could go every day, strapped behind that desk like a matrix revival of the mainframe. T-shirts that said, I love frog. I love Berlin. I love Russia. I love France. I love everywhere but this hell that I live in. 